In today's tutorial, we're going to stir up some magic and dive into the wispy world of smoke. So in my composition, I have a solid layer and I'm going to add the effect particle world. It's going to bring this onto our solid. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to particle and change it from line to a faded sphere. And then let's also, while we're here, change the color to white. There we go. And then under producer, let's just bring down the Y position just so it's at the bottom of our composition. And then under physics, let's turn the velocity to zero and the gravity to a minus number. So it's going up rather than down. Let's go with minus 0.05. See how that looks. Yep, not too bad, but we do want it to go a lot higher in our composition. So let's just up our longevity from one to two. Yeah, it's much better. Then also under producer, I am I am just going to increase our radius X just so it's quite a bit wider. Yep, there's about fine. And then also increase our birth rate to three, or maybe even let's go to four. We also want our opacity to fade off over a longer period of time. So under particle, I'm going to increase our max opacity to 100. And then under our opacity map, I'm just going to click and drag to fill in that first bit. So it starts off 100. And then about here, I'm just going to drag down. So it ends about there at zero. Let's try that. Yeah, that's looking much better. And I'm going to increase our size variation up to 100 as well, just so we get a bit more variation in size. Maybe let's put that to 75. And then what we're going to do is add another effect called fast box blur. So we can bring this underneath our particle world and let's up this to, let's say 20. That might be a bit too high. Let's go to 15. That's looking a bit more like smoke now. So what I might do is because I want it to be a bit more of a triangular shape. So it sort of comes to a point at the top and we can do that with our physics and I think it's our velocity. So if we just up this slightly, we can see it if we increase the velocity going out and if we reduce it to a minus, it will come into a point. And there we go. I think I actually preferred that as an outward cone. So I'm actually going to take that to a positive number and just bring it out to about a six. And then I might just reduce our radius as well on the X just to bring it in a bit tighter. Yeah, and I think that's looking quite good. So one of the limitations with particle world is sort of physics and sort of adding any wind. As you will see in the properties, there is an option to add some wind in the, where is it? In the physics, so let's close the particle, gravity vector. So under here, we can add some gravity in the X position. So it sort of acts as sort of wind, but it is very uniform and you don't have the ability to keyframe this. So it is very restrictive. So if you are looking to add some sort of wind effect to your smoke, and the best option is to use a slightly different effect. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate my example composition, go to our solid layer and just delete both those effects. And then back in our effects, this time let's search for particle playground and let's bring this onto our solid. And we're going to open up Canon and just bring our position down to the bottom, similar to where we had that before and make this white. While I'm here, I'm just going to up the radius to maybe five. And you will see that our particles are square, but as we're going to add a blur at the end of this, you won't even see that these are square, so that is fine. And then down in gravity, we're just going to make this a minus number. So let's say minus 50. Yep, and that's looking fine. So what I also am going to do is increase our particles per second to 150. Yeah, and that's looking a bit better. So let's just add our blur. So our fast box blur, bring this underneath and up that to 15. Just going to lower that slightly. 
and that's already looking quite good but the beauty of using particle playground rather than particle world is the ability to change the direction so up here under canon as you can see i can move this to the right and the left and it does change the direction of the smoke but also gravity or the floating aspect of the smoke that we want still brings it up so although it is pointing to the right it does then tend to float upwards so it makes a nice natural looking smoke and what we can also do is keyframe this so i'm just going to make that back to zero and hold alt or option and click the stopwatch and type in wiggle open bracket two comma and then maybe 50 let's see how 50 looks and so and what you'll see is with that wiggle that direction is constantly moving creating a sort of a windy sort of scene so i am i am just going to up our particles per second to 200 and it's looking quite thin because our particles are quite small so i am just going to create a new composition let's call this a circle and i'm going to make that 50 by 50 okay and then in here i'm just going to make a circle and i can keep that white and go back to our example two and bring in that circle and bring it to the bottom turn it off and then in our particle playground let's go to our layer map and use the layer circle that we just created if i turn off our box blur you will see that if i just undo that our particles are square by picking that circle they're all using our circle which is quite big so i'm just going to scale that down a bit because now that we're using our own layer our particle radius doesn't affect this so whatever size we want we need to do within our circle composition so i think that size is fine let's turn our blur back on yep and i think that's looking quite good so what i am going to do is bring in our smoke example number two into a new composition i'm going to duplicate it and solo that duplicate just so we can see that one layer I'm going to find the effect extract and bring this onto our layer. Then I'm just going to bring this in and that does disappear. And I know why that is because if we go back to our composition, we have a transparent background and we want a black background. So I'm going to duplicate our solid layer and just delete all the effects just so that is a solid black background with our smoke on top. And then back in our other pre-comp, I'll just reset our extract so you can see what happens. If I just bring this in, we can extract certain parts of our smoke. So I'm just going to try and get the edge here. And then again, let's bring on a blur. So our fast box blur, make that maybe 10. Then unsolo that and let's put that on add. And let's just offset it slightly to a couple of frames forward maybe a bit more. I'm just going to bring that extract slightly. And then I'm going to duplicate that one more time and solo it again so we can see that one layer. Turn off our blur and just reset that extract. And this time I'm going to bring in the left side all the way to the right and try and get a bit more of the central parts similar to that there. Turn our blur back on. And then I'm going to unsolo that layer so we can see all three. And then what I am going to do is just bring down the brightness of this layer. So I'm going to bring in a brightness and contrast. Just turn that down. And then change this to multiply. And there we go. So that is just a quick way where you can just add a bit more detail into your smoke rather than that first layer by itself it is looking quite flat. So that is just a quick way of just adding a bit more detail in. I haven't spent too much time on it, but you can see how you could just add some more detail in there. You can tweak these for as long as you want. And then we can even add an adjustment layer. Then we can bring it on a box blur to affect everything, maybe a 10. And that's looking much better. And that sort of just helps it all bed in together. And there we have it, two slightly different techniques to create realistic smoke inside After Effects. Drop any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. But for now, thanks for watching and see you soon.